Today I'm going to show you how to repurpose some wine bottles and turn them into beautiful etched glass lanterns. Hi everyone, it's Natalie from NellyDesign.com. So today we're going to be etching glass and using repurposed wine bottles and I created a flamingo design especially for this purpose. The link is in the description of this video. Let's start by me showing you what you're going to need to etch glass. When we etch glass, we use vinyl as a stencil to protect the surface we don't want any etching on and then we apply a cream. So you're going to need vinyl. You're going to need either removable vinyl or permanent vinyl. It really doesn't matter. What I really want you to choose is maybe a color you don't like, something you think you're not going to use. That's really the best thing to do. So I've chosen this very beautiful colors right here. <laughs> and. You're going to need either a Cricut Maker or an Explorer because my design really wraps around the bottle and you're going to need a 12 inch mat for that. So you're going to need the mat, the Cricut Maker or the Explorer, but you can totally edge glass using a Cricut Joy, just you're going to need to use another design, maybe a simpler design or some little designs that you could apply on the bottle uh, everywhere around it without wrapping it all over it. So we're also going to need a transfer paper. So if you have parchment paper, I also suggest that you have this. I'm going to show you a little trick on this. I'm using painter's tape because you're going to see I'm going to protect the bottle with this. Also, if you have old newspapers or anything to protect your surface, this is really a good thing to have. Also, the etching cream. There's a lot of kind of etching cream out there. I'm using the Rustoleum Tub and Tile. I'm going to show it to you right here. This is the one I have because I'm in Canada and Armor Etch is really hard for me to get and or really expensive, one or the other. So I got this at Home Depot and this is what I've been using. It, it's really working well, but I want to warn you that everything that I'm going to say today is going to be about this cream. So if you're using something else, please follow the instruction that is written on uh, the product that you're using. So that's good to know. I'm going to be using this foam brush too. Of course, you're going to need some glasses, protective glasses and some gloves. Also, please try to be close to a window and open it. It's really, it's not, doesn't really smell very good. So you will want to be close to a window. And if you have applied vinyl before, you're going to know that it's always a good thing to use some rubbing alcohol to clean the surface. So that's what we're going to need. And of course, some wine bottles and fairy lights. So I bought these fairy lights out of Amazon. They are pretty cool because they look like a cork. I'm going to show them to you right here. See, it's kind of a cork. So you insert them and it really looks good. So I love this. And what I want to tell you about the wine bottles is that you can etch any glass you want. I've tried it on many bottles, it works fine. But for the purpose of this project, what I strongly suggest is that you take a bottle, either clear or yellow or green or whatever, that has this shape. I don't know if you see the difference. I brought this one so you can show uh, to show you the difference. If we wrap a design on this one, and try wrapping a design on this one, this curved part is going to be very hard to wrap around. So that's why I suggest you get this kind of shape of a bottle. Now, I do have this one that has the right shape, but this is another thing. It hatches pretty well. No problem with this. The thing is that the fairy lights, they don't show through because this bottle is black. I don't know if you can see it, but black uh, doesn't really go well with the fairy lights. So either yellow, green, transparent will be fine and this shape, try to get this and everything is going to be fine. Now you're saying, well I don't want to remove the labels. Yeah, I know labels are hard to remove but I have a special trick for you and it's going to be very easy. Um, we're going to need of course a goo gone to uh, remove all the adhesive on the bottle to make sure everything is gone. But to remove the label, I will do it in a blink of an eye and for that, I'm going to bring you in my kitchen. The easiest and fastest way to remove labels from the wine bottle is to simply add boiling water inside the bottle, wait a couple of minutes and peel the label. That's it! Now I've tried this on many different bottles of wine and of course, the one I had most trouble removing were these ones because you know, it always happens when you're filming. <laughs> to make sure there's no glue residue on the bottle, I wipe it down with Goo Gone. You can do it with other things like peanut butter or olive oil, but I must say that this product is very efficient. Finally, don't forget to wash it with dish soap. 
So now we're ready to go into design space. So we're gonna go to upload and you're gonna go get the file that you have previously saved onto your computer. So this is the file, the Flamingo file. So you're gonna go to upload and find it on your computer, but I have it right here. So I'm gonna select it and add to Canva. Now, the only thing you need to do for this is to get a tape and measure the, your wine bottle, because as you can see, uh, the difference between this one and this one, they're not the same size. This one is a bit smaller. So you want to make sure that the width of the flamingo image matches the size of the bottle. So I'm going to wrap around the size of the bottle. This is the one I'm going to use. So I have nine and a half inches. So that's exactly the size of my file. If I would have taken this one, well, it's a bit smaller. You see, it's nine and a quarter, just a little bit. And just to make sure the height should be perfect too, six and almost seven. So that's what we have also on the file. So this is perfect. The only thing we need to do is to click on make it. Nothing else to do, pretty simple. Now I have a Maker 3. If you don't have the Explore 3 or Maker 3, you won't have this window, but I need to specify that I want to cut it on a mat. Then click on Continue. And I'm going to be choosing Premium Vinyl Permanent Glossy. That's what I have. And it's that easy. Now, one thing I want to show you. I've... Before you cut a large design like that, even though it's a vinyl a color that you don't want to really use, and uh, you don't really mind using because we're going to be throwing it away, please do a test cut. You don't want to waste vinyl, um, especially that size. So what I always do before hitting make it, I simply write a little A, like 0.3 inches tall, and I try it in my maker. I put it in my Cricut and I try to cut it and see if it cuts perfectly. If not, I'll be able to adjust it. You don't want to try the whole design and just waste all this vinyl. So you see that this corner is like my little haze there. I'm just going to flip it around and do the design on the other side. So for weeding, if you're wondering, trying to figure out what you, sh what you should remove or what you shouldn't remove, well, just take a look in design space. Everything you see through it, you're going to need to remove because this is where we're going to put, be putting the etching cream. So if you're not sure, really just take a look in Design Space, it's going to really help you. I'm also going to cut a piece of transfer paper that is about the same size as the vinyl. So let me see. I like that there are squares. It helps. <laughs> you don't want it to be too big because we're going to be wrapping it around the bottle. If the transfer paper is too big, you're going to have like a little bit more trouble. So the trick that we want to do is really try to put the transfer paper right at the bottom of the image so that it's going to help us when we transfer it on the bottle. So what I'm going to do is simply remove a little piece of the transfer paper and like this all the way to one side I'm gonna bend it like this and then I'm gonna apply it right here at the bottom Make sure it covers and I'll, I'm going to try to be as aligned as I can so that the squares on the transfer paper will help me make sure I am leveled on the bottle later on. Then you can remove it from under and just apply it with your scraper and make sure it covers everything. So the best trick I can tell you if you want to really easily remove uh, the backing of the vinyl is try go under it like this and really roll the backing. Don't try to take the transfer paper and lift it up like that. It, it will never work, especially if you have small details. This is the best trick you can do, is really come here and roll it towards you and you see if there's a little piece that wants to come, you just glue it back there, you just apply it. 
you see this one it doesn't want to stay there you go and you go like this really slowly and if it wants to come off you just go back and reapply it that's the best trick I can tell you that and rub hard <laughs> So first of all, we're gonna wash the bottle with a bit of rubbing alcohol, make sure there's no residue, maybe you touch it with your finger and it's still greasy or anything. So I wanna make sure that the vinyl really sticks there and that the etching cream doesn't sit through under the vinyl. So I'm gonna be using parchment paper on half of my design, just like this, so it helps me align it on the bottle. And as for the bottle, I'm gonna put it there and sometimes I like to use my little aluminum ball to just jam it there so it stays and it doesn't move. That helps. And the parchment paper will allow me to move it a bit. I don't know if you can see it. Let me come closer to you. I'm gonna be able to move it like this and really make sure that I'm straight. And as soon as I am, and I think it's perfect, by looking over it like that, I'm gonna stick this and start rolling the bottle now. Let me remove this. The thing is that if you don't start by the middle, if you start by an end, it's for sure it's gonna be crooked at the end and you're gonna be missing a piece of the design. So that's why I like, I like to start by the middle and just add it like this. You can use your scraper and gently press it like this. And since there's, there's a parchment paper right here, this, the other, there's no chance it's gonna stick. So this is really nice to have. And you're gonna do the same thing. You can remove the parchment paper and just roll the bottle or apply it with your scraper. Rolling the bottle is another nice trick And this time. Now you see this bottle is kind of a bit like this. So at the, at, the, at the back I have this little seam, but that's okay, I'm gonna add some tape to make sure there's no etching cream that goes there. But it's gonna be perfect. So remove the transfer tape, and we're gonna be making sure then that the vinyl is really nicely applied everywhere. I don't know if you know, but I always, reuse my transfer tape more than once. I think you should do too. It's really nice to save some time where we can. So what I want to tell you is that um, you should check your bottle to make sure that the vinyl is touching everywhere. And if there are some little bubbles, you really need to come and press it down either with your nail or with your scraper. I mean, a um, a bubble in the middle of this design right here is not really important. But anywhere that the design is, you don't want a bubble like that because uh, the etching cream is going to sip underneath. And that's not what we want. So we want to make sure that everywhere there will be cream, that we want the bottle to be etched, there are no bottles. So this is a bit, this is like the longest part, but the rest is pretty fast. <laughs> So I have protected the bottom and top of the bottle with some painter's tape. The design that I've made is to enable you not to have to uh, put some etching cream all the way to the top. So this is why the design is made like this, so you can still hold the bottle like this while we put the etching cream, which is pretty good. So we're ready for the etching cream. And as I said before, don't forget the glove, don't forget to open the window and also to put your security glasses on. And when we're gonna put the etching cream on, you, you want a thick layer. This is, like I said, this is for the rust bath and tile cream. If you have something else, please refer to the product uh, specifications. So, as for myself, we're gonna open it. So we're gonna apply it so that we don't see through it. I don't know if you can see it right here, but I'm using the backing of the vinyl right here, so instead, in case it, dr it drips, but 
trying to reuse everything that I can. And just don't, it's not really painting, it's more dumping some cream on it than painting. You really want it to be thick. You don't want to see through it. Well, you're going to see a bit through it, but you really want to make sure there are there's cream everywhere. And when we're sure that everything is covered with enough cream, we make a 20 minute timer and we're gonna come back and uh, remove the cream. During the 20 minute, you might wanna check on it if it drips, just put it back. You don't need to move it around or anything, but if it wants to drip, just come back and like bring it up again so it doesn't drip all over. So my timer is up and the great thing about this etching cream is that you can reuse it. So all of everything that is over, I'm gonna put it back in the container and I'm gonna be able to reuse it. I like to use this little uh, popsicle stick to put it back. So you just scrape it. You can also do it with the paintbrush if you want, no problem. So the last step will be to take the bottle and go under the sink and rinse it out. Let's go. Remove all the cream under running water. When you can't feel any more cream, you can start removing the vinyl. I like to do it right here with my scraper and under running water. If you see white spots appearing, don't panic. This is totally normal. When you're done removing the vinyl, wash the bottle with dish soap and everything will be perfect. So here we are, final step, and the easiest one, I must say, is to add the little light inside of the bottle. So you can see probably in the camera, it's just awesome. You see the, the design is pretty cool. I'm really happy about it. I hope you are too. So no special trick for this one, just put it in. <laughs> Thanks for being there and if you like the engraving style, well I'm gonna put you another video that might interest you right here. See you later, bye!